further ado, Malim uh, Jiraj on his experiences in Zanzibar. Malim, what language are you speaking? <laughs> you tell me. It's good we'd be having a mix of Gujarati, Kiswahili, English. All right, a mixture of all three languages. Tafadal. Right. Bar Muhammad and Wali Muhammad Salawat. Allahumma salli ala أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي صلوات ممنين المؤمنات السلام عليكم it is about zanzibar jangbar or zinjibar so this is here Arabic, Urdu, Gujarati, Swahili, English. We can mix together, like Halwa in Zanzibar. Leaving out Kachi, which was not there in the dictionary. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> My name is Gulam Jiwraj. And uh, I would like to thank the organizers of this tonight meeting and to share my personal experiences regarding the revolution in Zanzibar. Brothers and sisters, Zanzibar is very well known throughout the world at that time. I don't know now. But me personally, as born in Zanzibar, and having that a big Koja community in Zanzibar was very, very known at that time by having two very big Imam Baras mosques and various types of and many of mehfils in Zanzibar, which is still is existing today there. But sorry to say nobody is there now hardly maybe about 10 to 15 families remain in zanzibar my experience regarding revolution which uh, i think uh, we have very little time now is 12:35 and i would like to picture regarding revolution in zanzibar where my personal experience was there. The history is long. The Arabs were really dominating in Zanzibar at that time, and we were having Sultan of Zanzibar, the last Sultan of Zanzibar, and where he was protected by the British government, and he was known as Khalifa Jamshid bin Abdullah. He was a musket. There were so many muskets in Zanzibar. There were many Arabs, Comorians, Bohoras, Ismailis, Isnashiris, Gons, Afroshirazis, Hindus, Parsis, Alhamdulillah. What a unity we had at that time. But revolution killed us. This revolution, which came soon after one month of the independence of Zanzibar. Zanzibar independence was on 10th of January, I think 10th of December 1963, if I'm not forgetting, right? And the revolution took place soon after 30 days on 12th January 1964. Now, that revolution was completely different than what our brother Raza said and uh, our Dr. Saab. Zanzibar revolution was very, very cruelty. Though they were all Muslims, 95% to 98% they were all Muslims of different Kabila. Like in Induguzangu to Meone Wasana, Katka revolution. Vile Vile, Alhamdulillah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that alhamdulillah today we are happy here. We are still Zanzibaris. But the island Zanzibar in Pemba is gone. It will never come up again, that place. 
I don't say myself that I'm, I'm proud here, but every year I visit Zanzibar during Chehlum, and I stay there for four or five days going around, looking to our building where I was born, and still it is the memories. Now, revolution, when revolution occurred, it was on Sunday, 12th January, and it was the last Sunday before the month of Ramadan. So we Zanzibaris, we had a habit to go on a picnic on the last Sunday, which is uh, called in Kiswahili, Kuvunja Jungu, Jungu, the pots, where we cook food. Our mothers, they cook food on the earthenware cook, you know, pots. Now, according to Kiswahili proverb, they say Kuvunja Jungu, that means you are breaking that Jungu. No more cooking, a Ramadan is coming. So usually, Every community in Zanzibar during that last Sunday prepared to go for picnic on the beach houses. They have their own houses they had on beach. And uh, they met, they, I mean, uh, gathered together with the relatives and friends before Ramadan. So I was the person, my personally, let me give you my personal views that that day, uh, before that day, it was Saturday, 11 January, about 3 p.m. in the afternoon, me and my four friends, we decided to go for a picnic for a night to our beach house about 35 miles to Jambiani, a place called Jambiani with a beautiful white beach, sand beach. And alhamdulillah, when we were at the gas station, which is called till today, it is there, auto sales, and so is his guest station of uh, Chattu family. And uh, I was filling the gas at this gas station. At the gas station, I was filling the petrol. And uh, the guy, the attendant, the black guy, he came to me. He said, where you are going? I said, why are you asking me? He said, uh, let me tell you, Bwana. At that time, Bwana was there, not Dugu. Let me tell you, Bana, Leo, it atokea ghasia kubwa usiku hapa, Zanzibar. Big trouble is going to happen. Kwa hivu, Bana, rudini nyumbani, upesi usiku mwe nyumbani. You should be at home with your families. I said, okay. We didn't care. I didn't care at that time. So whenever we were, I was in the car with my friends driving to Jambiani, and I was telling to my friends, saying, this is, I was told by that guy, say, don't listen, man, nothing will happen. And at that time, there was tension in Zanzibar regarding politics between three parties, political parties. One is very well known as Zanzibar Nationalist Party. In Kiswahili, we were calling Hezbu Party. And then there was a majority Afro Shirazi Party. And the last was the People's I think it was, no, 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 no. It was uh, Mohammed Shamte People's Party. So People's Party and the ZNP Party, they united together and they won the election. They got Uhuru independence from the British in December. January happened revolution. And uh, in short, I was driving, we reached at the place where we were going. We stayed at night on the beach, early in the morning on Sunday, at about 9 a.m. in the morning. I was personally listening to the, I had a transistor radio at that time, a battery operated transistor radio, and I was listening to the commentary of the cricket. In London, between England and Australia, I was listening to the commentary and suddenly the commentator said we have a very, very sad news from Zanzibar. That Zanzibar government, these are the words, Zanzibar government has been overthrown by unidentified persons. So we said what? What we should do? We didn't know what is revolution at that time in Zanzibar. 
What is revolution? We didn't know about what this map is. So we said, okay, fine, government, government of Zanzibar has been overthrown, not us. Let's enjoy. So we were on the beach. But my brothers and sisters, on that day on Sunday, at the place where we were there at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, we could see a Land Rover Jeep with 10 people with rifles. They were all blacks. And they were telling us, aha, wahindi na enjoy yapa, eh? Nanduku zenu na uwa kule. Come on, get in the car. Ah, we were shocked what's going on, man. I said, this is my pinduzi. When zenu na uwa wa nyem na hapa mna enjoy meka. Aya, ingia nana gari. Kila mtu achukui gari yaki. Everybody is his own car. Okay, so I was driving the car. And we were escorted by with the rifles and guns to the place in town called Rahaleo. You must be knowing Rahaleo. Where Rahaleo was the place where the uh, Zanzibar broadcasting station was located there. It was there. And nearby, about 700 yards, we had our own Kabrastan there. Haji Jan Muhammad Rauji Kabrastan. Just next to it, Rahaleo. But then what they did to us, they took our car, they told us to remove the shoes, right? Go inside, we could see hundreds and hundreds of Asians, Arabs, Comorians, Goans, and especially the community of Koja Ismailis. Young girls, children, they were crying, yelling inside. So we went inside there. We met all the guys. We didn't know what's going on. And I was worried about my family behind. What is happening back at home? Nobody knows anything. We stayed that Sunday night, whole night there, under the sky. There was a class there, I mean, a, a school, an African school, there were classrooms with uh, wooden benches where all the females were, they were there, the males were outside. Early in the morning on Sunday, I mean uh, on Monday, we didn't know what's going on around in the town. We were just down there, no food, no water. So personally, I went to the main entrance where the uh, revolutionary members were standing there with the rifles and suddenly I saw Muhammad Biremi coming in Muhammad Bai he's not here huh? I saw Muhammad Biremi coming in and he was sent by our Quwat islam Jamaat and Hujjatul Islam Jamaat in Zanzibar go if you can possible bring us the report from Rahaleo, we could hear they are our sisters and brothers there. What is their position? So he managed to push in himself inside. I don't know how. May Allah bless him. And he came and he asked us everything. I said, Bana, we need so many things. We need help here. Well, how many days are we going to stay here? He said, this is not my lookout. My lookout is, are you all okay? I said, we are all okay. Alhamdulillah. One of the Isnashri young boy was killed on Revolution Day on the gas station. He refused to give the gas to the members of the Revolution Council members, and he was shot there and there. That was only in Isnashri who died. But then what happened that on Tuesday morning, we were allowed to go back at home. How we were allowed? Barefoot from Rahaleo to our places in town was about two miles or two and a half miles to walk. And uh, we were escorted by these Revolution Council members raising our hand like this and were told to shout, to yell on the street while we are walking, Uhuru na Karume, Uhuru na Mapinduzi. On my left, 
on my right, behind me, in front of me. All of us, we are Asians. All of us. Smileys, Boras, Goans, Snatcheries. Now this is one of the parts. Alhamdulillah, we reached our house safely. And I met my family, alhamdulillah, safely. I was given the story, what happened to them. Alhamdulillah, everything was safe. My parents, they were in Shambas also. They went for picnic. They were safe also. This is one of the parts. The second that uh, we decided few of these nurseries in Zanzibar. One was myself because Ramadan was there in the month of Ramadan. I was already entered on Wednesday. So we finished Ramadan and I was the first person to leave Zanzibar and leave my family. We were three guys. We decided we throw our passport, British passport. And let's go get any passport, but get out from this island. We have already seen that there's no future for us. Me, I left my wife. I left my son, who was about seven months at that time. Elder then Riaz Mazahir, who is in New York. And uh, we came to Dar es Salaam. This was end of February, after Ramadan. We came to Dar es Salaam, and Alhamdulillah, we were so many brothers there in, in Musafir Khana in Dar es Salaam. And we started looking for a job. Now, the question of refugees, when you come to say about refugees in Zanzibar, there were so many refugees from Zanzibar. But then, uh, they had their own means to leave Zanzibar after, getting, after they were allowed by the government to leave. But there were some Africans of Zanzibaris who were supporting the Arab party, Isbu party, they went to Mombasa and were given the place to stay in Shimoni. More Shimoni, somewhere in Mombasa. And Alhamdulillah, those refugees, they stayed there about two years in Mombasa. And they were brought back to Zanzibar. But all of us Asians, I mean, uh, we came to Tanganyika mainland after the union between Zanzibar and Tanganyika. I mean, so many of our people, they started moving from Zanzibar, coming out after April 26th, where there was a union of, between Zanzibar and Tanganyika. Before that, it was not possible to leave Zanzibar. When we come to the point, I'm sorry, Momini, I've got another, can I go through? I have two more to speak. Okay. We come to regarding uh, the forced marriages in Zanzibar, where Karume gave order saying that all the Asians, Arabs, Iranian girls are going to be married by force unless the parents, they pay 55,000 shillings to the government. So it was a shock to the community and the Jamaat of Zanzibar Huwatul Islam and Hujjat Islam committee members, they sat together. They discussed about this at that time, what to do. The parents, they were worried. And uh, suddenly, the young girls started escaping in the Daos to Dar es Salaam, in the dinghies, wearing kanzu and kofia tarbush leaving Zanzibar beaches at night, about 11 p.m. at night, in the dinghies, crossing the sea to Dar es Salaam, reaching Dar es Salaam at Kilimanjaro Hotel Beach. I'm experienced that because my sister was there too. There was no any other way to take out the young girls. But Alhamdulillah, it went down. After a few years, there was no force when the union government was there. Alhamdulillah. Then we come to about this forced marriages that uh, 
you must have heard there is a book uh, which has been uh, published by Sipten Panjwani in London. And uh, the name of the book, this is regarding those uh, four Persian girls. What happened, how it happened, who supported them, and who came to rescue them, and how they escaped these young girls to Nairobi, Iranian embassy. Reaching Iran, and alhamdulillah, now they are married, they are, alhamdulillah, they are safe and sound. But there is a book written on this point, and uh, the book has been published by Sipten Pajwani, written this book by Marhum Fida Hussain Abdullah Hamir, at that time when he was a chairman of the Bilal Muslim Mission for so many years in Dar es Salaam. That book is available till today at Stenmore Jamaat Library at the rate of two pounds. Muminin can obtain from there. And the last but not the least, we come to the shooting at the Zanzibar Tazia Khana. It was 14th of Jamaad al Awwal night, Wafat night of Janabi Sayyida Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. And uh, there were Mu'minin there, Azadars, about 30 to 40, at the Husseini Tazia Khana Zanzibar, which is very popular, this Tazia Khana in Zanzibar. And till today, it is raining there. Suddenly, at the helm of the Majlis, two African guys, one of them was a Revolution Council member who was carrying a weapon, shotgun. He entered from behind the door of Tazia Khana, and he saw about 30, 40 people there, quiet, listening to somebody who was on the chair reciting mudless, not knowing what is going on, and he started yelling, saying, you wahindi mefanyam kutano hapa kupindua serikali ya Zanzibar. Kwa hivo, started shooting. Now, at the action of shooting, they were, I mean, killed inside about five guys were killed inside Taziakana. Outside, they were wounded about four, three to four. One of them was my father. He was wounded. Murtaza Gulam Sir Rajbali Jafar, Mustafa Jafar's brother, uh, Murtaza, he was wounded. And uh, I have. Uh, the names here of five, those uh, shaheed who were killed there at Zanzibar. And uh, let me get their name. It was, uh, one of them was uh, Haji Muhammad Asr, Sayyid Abdul Muttalib Sayyid Hashim, Sayyid Agha Ali Azhar Sayyid Hussein, Haji Abdul Hussain Ramtala Tejani, and a young boy of 12, 13 years old. Uh, he was Master Gulam Abbas Kasmali, a son of very well known Kasunahoza, a person called Kasunahoza, his son. And from the wounded side was my father, was our brother Murtaza Rajbali Jafar, and there was another guy there. And second day what happened that there was a great funeral came out with four janazas, five janazas from Zanzibar, Kuwatul Islam Jamaat, going to Haji Muhammad Sen, Muhammad Raza Rauji, Kabrastan. There were a lot of people of different communities attending that funeral. This is short lived of uh, Zanzibar story after the revolution. Mominin, thank you very much for listening to me. And let us pray Surah Fatiha for all these marhumin. Surah al Mubarak al Fatiha.
for Muhammad and Wali Muhammad Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you, Malim. That was very, very interesting. Uh, before I ask uh, for the questions, those of you who have given orders for the chicken, they're closing it down, so you need to go pick it up. Um, any questions from the floor? Uh, yes. <coughs> Zanzibar was the first outpost as far as the Khoja Shia Ishnashri communities from India. Uh, from that time all the way down to the time of the revolution, what would, what would be the approximate number of generations of people who had actually already lived in Zanzibar? Uh, according to my experience, it was a very long, long years, which I can't give you the number, but I can tell you one thing that uh, the first Imam Bara which was built was in Zanzibar by those who came from India, the guys. This was very long time ago, which I can't remember. This is it. Thank you. Asan -san. Malim, what was your age at that time? At the time of... Uh, Revolution. I was at that time 24 years. Of the forced marriages, other than Persians, I think there was one Hoja, our Shinashi family girl that was forcibly married to one of the people there, right? Uh, there were Khojas, not Ishnashiris, but they were Ismailis. There were two girls, Khoja Ismailis. One of them, after three days, she said, I'm happy that I was I'm married with this guy. The other one, she was in trouble. And uh, she was looking <laughs> away how to escape from her husband. Thank you, Malim. Um, the government of Tanzania could not intervene at that time? Yes. I mean, uh, this was actually because uh, the mainland uh, government could not interfere because there was no any uh, constitutional saying that anything happened in Zanzibar, we could interfere. So Nerere never put his hand there as far as Karume was a president of Zanzibar, I for sure. Very good, excellent. Any more questions? Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Just a very quick comment. Uh, I don't want to take much time. But we can see with all the three of you sitting there from three different parts of East Africa that there is one thing that is common between all three. And that is that all these atrocities were committed by extremists who claim to be Muslims. Yes. And this is the same thing history is repeating now in the Middle East. Yes. We ask Allah to grant all of us protection from such atrocities. Asant, thank you so much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you all for coming to this session. Uh, gentlemen, all three of you, it was extremely informative and uh, knowledgeable and we thank you for it. I always keep saying that Kojas are unique, but after hearing this session, I think we are extremely unique as in how many communities can you find where you can have this kind of uh, uh, incidences. So, Asante Sana, thank you all. Thank you for coming, and gentlemen, thank you for attending. Thank you. Bar Muhammad Inwale, Muhammad Salawat.